In this video, we'll be covering the basics on how to create a file intended to go to a traditional four color print press. First of all, the four color print press uses four inks to create all the colors using fine dots, and that's usually defined by a line screen or a dots per inch. Typically for high resolution output for a magazine, for example, it would be 300 dots per inch. Now I've already got a PDF file created for print and I'll just zoom in on it and we'll talk a bit about some of the uh, conventional elements for press. Number one, you can see an output of the color bars on the left here. Cyan, C, Magenta, M, Yellow, Y, and at the bottom, Black, K. On this particular output, we actually have the blend of cyan and magenta, magenta and yellow, and cyan and yellow, which make our secondary colors. And then down here, a virtual gray, cyan, magenta, yellow, and ultimately the pure black ink. So typically it's the four colors that will make up all colors on an image. Now if we look down at the corners here, we have what are known as crop marks. And all of the imagery that goes beyond the edge of these crop marks is known as a bleed. And the purpose of that is that when something comes off the press, it is, goes through a trimmer, which actually cuts the paper, and it'll cut it as close as it can along these lines. But if it's not perfect, you don't want to have a little sliver of white. So that's why we allow for a little bit of offsetting with the trimmer, and we provide what's called a bleed which means even if the trimmer was a little bit off, for example, if I just zoom in here, let's say the trimmer came a little bit off on either side of this line, particularly on the outside, we don't want to have, again, a little sliver of white showing, so this compensates for the fact that the trimmer might not be perfect. These other marks here are known as registration marks, and they are made up of all four inks, it appears black, but they are actually made up of all four inks, and that shows how close the registration is for aligning the four inks, which will account for the sharpness of the image so long as there is good registration. This is just another form of a registration mark in the corner here. So these are registration marks meant for the press people to ensure that the colors are registered so that the image will stay sharp and focused. And these are the trim marks so that when the item is finished printing, we trim it to the edges and we don't have any little white lines potentially running up the edge of the image. Now there are other issues when going to press and I think I'll go over to Illustrator now and we'll talk about those. So let's pop over to Illustrator. I'm just going to tab over here with my Command Tab key. And I'm in Illustrator. And I already have the file finished here, but I'll talk around it. Um, but I will show you how to start a file intended for four color print press. And that's the CMYK color model. So if I was to start a new file, I would go up File New. There are some preset profiles, so you might as well start with print. I'll just give it a name here my print file okay a uh, number of artboards that's up to you I only ever use one artboard for Illustrator files letter size is good I will change my units to inches because it is quite relevant when going to press versus going to web and the bleeds that we talked about we set right here and the conventional bleed is one eighth of an inch and it does augment by that amount every time I click the arrows. 0.125 of an inch is one eighth of an inch. Now let's go down to the advanced area here. Color mode, we definitely want to keep it at CMYK. Raster effects, if we were to place any sort of raster image within the artwork, we do want it to resolve at 300 pixels per inch which is conventional, again, for press output. 
And you can see here that's the highest. We have medium and screen meaning computer screen. So we'll keep it at 300 and preview mode I'll leave at default as well. So with these settings my file will be properly initiated to create artwork intended for the four color press. And I can just click OK and there we go. Now I will tab back to my finished file here. And for the sake of uh, working with four color press I actually brought down four windows and subgrouped them right here and I'll show you which ones they are. There's the typical layers. There's attributes. I also have appearance. And here's a good one for checking work. Separations preview. Now when I go into this file, let me just zoom up here. You'll notice at the corners I've got a red line, a black line, and a light blue line which happens to be a guide that I created. The black line is the edge of your artboard. In other words, it's the edge of the artwork. The red line over here was created when we established that 1 8 inch bleed. So this is there to help you to set your artwork to go past the trim point because the trim line is the edge of your artwork, this black line, and the bleed is the red line. So you want to pull your artwork, anything that goes to the edge should be pulled over to create a bleed like so and it will snap so long as your snapping is on and it should be by default. And again this is that one eighth of an inch to allow for the trimmer to trim it off and never have a little white line on the edges of your artwork. Now if it's just white and your paper is white of course you don't need to bring in a white color plate if you will because the color of the paper is what's providing the white. There's no white ink, not in a basic four color breakdown. There's simply the white of the paper. Now let me just uh, move around the artwork a little bit here. And let's see, we'll go down to this uh, text here, Slim Shady. Now if I was to uh, actually highlight the blue here, and we'll go into that blue, you can see that it's made up of 100% cyan, 30% magenta, 10% yellow, and 10% black. And that's what makes this color right here. If I click on the green, again, it's not a pure CMY or K. It's made up of a combination of some of those. In this case, 82% cyan, 7% magenta, 100% yellow, and no black. Okay, the point that I'm trying to make here is that my text here is actually made of pure black. And let me just show you that. 100% K and zero on all three others. This is where I'm going to use my separation preview to demonstrate an effect. Uh, again, because of registration, it may not be perfect. So actually, before I go to the SEP window, let me just turn on a potential result that could occur here. I'll just turn that on and I'll close it. If, let's say, my registration is not perfect and the black plate is offset a bit, I could potentially see a bit of white hanging out because the way my file is currently set up, the pure black is going to punch out a hole out of the other colors. And I'll show you that on my separation preview. First, I need to turn on overprint preview, and we'll talk about that very shortly. And if I turn off the black, I'm seeing, actually, let me just go turn off that fake white offset here. Okay, so I've turned off the black on my separation preview, and I'm seeing all other colors as if they were printed. Again, if I start to subtract magenta, you will see the color shifts. Right now I'm simply looking at the yellow plate. I could also simply look at the magenta plate, or rather the cyan plate, or the magenta plate. Any one of these is demonstrating that the pure black of the text is what's called being knocked out. It's cutting a hole through those other colors. 
Again, if I show it, here's the black mixed with magenta, and I'll show them all. And that's what the end result would be. So to avoid that offsetting, if you will, typically with black, in this case, I would set it to what's called overprint, which means it wouldn't knock out the other colors. The black would simply print over the other colors. Now, the basic premise for this working is the overprint color should be darker than the colors underneath. Unless you're going for some special color blend effect, that is the rationale. So let me show you what it looks like when I set the text to overprint. And I do that through my attributes panel. So with my text currently highlighted, I go to attributes. And you see we have the potential for overprint fill. And if I had a stroke, I could potentially overprint the stroke. So let me click overprint fill. I'll just close that. We'll go to our separation preview. I'll turn off the black. And lo and behold, it is no longer being knocked out. The other colors are printing underneath. And when the black plate finally prints, and by the way, the black plate always prints last in a four color process, it will sit on top of the other inks. And there is absolutely no possibility of having that little bit of knockout white show around the edges. So that's the basic concept for doing overprint. Now there's another term that goes along with overprint and it's called trapping. And if I just drag down a bit here, I'll show you with this red stroke around the image as it merges with the blue. I currently have under my view overprint preview turned on. Let me turn that off for a minute here. This is what you see normally when you're working in Illustrator. Here is my stroke and again potentially I could have some off registration and create some weirdness around the edge. So usually we'll put a very thin overprint called a trap. And the way I've done that is if I highlight this circle here, I'll go to my appearance and I've got two strokes. One is the main one and this other one, which I have exaggerated in size, but it has an overprint on it. But you can't really appreciate that unless I go to View, Over Print Preview. And I'll turn that on now. Now you can see, and I am zoomed up here at 200%, you can see the effect that this much of the red will overlap the ink underneath, the blue, the, mag the magenta, and the cyan, and the yellow. It will overlap all of those inks this much. Here, if I zoom up a bit more can really see it exaggerated. Now I can lessen that as well. Again, if I go to my appearances and highlight this and simply decrease the value of that stroke, so I'm lessening the stroke, I'm decreasing what ultimately gets overprinted, but it's still creating what's called a trap. So I'm, again, I'm potentially avoiding those little white lines or odd yellow lines, or it depends really what colors are involved here. So that's called a trap. And we tend to do that using a stroke most of the time to, again, prevent off-registration issues. And they do happen. It's just by how much. Uh, a good print, you won't notice it, but sometimes the print might not be so good. And you want to be able to compensate for that. So that is overprint, used for doing blunt overprinting, usually of black, as well as creating what are called traps, as you can see here. Now, as a final step to prepare this for output for print, I like to play it safe and not count on the print house having the fonts. Because if I sent this file out, it would require them having the same fonts as me to render out all of my text as I would created it. So there's a little trick basically we use is that we outline all our fonts. So the convention for me is to save an original file, my editable file, versus my output file. So I could just do a uh, duplicate file, I guess. I could do a save as. So I'll actually do that right now. I'll do save as. I said for screen print. And I'll just append this um, outline. Okay. 
So I've tucked away my other file and I've got this current one ready to outline my fonts. And the basic way I do it is I simply go Command A, select all, and outline fonts. Type, where is it here? Create outlines. And you can see here it's Command Shift O. That's what I typically do. Command Shift O, create outlines. And you'll see all your text renders out as vector shapes. It's no longer editable as text. That's why I back up this file with the other version in case I want to make some changes. So you would have to redo this file every time if you made a change. But here we have the outline font. I'm just going to save that. And the last step is you can actually send this to your printer and they could very well work with this. But if you wanted to set it up as a PDF for print, I'll just show you the settings for that. So file, save as, and the first thing I'll do is I'll change it to Adobe PDF and I click save and I'll just go through the settings here. Under general, I can leave everything the same. Compression, make sure that it's set to do not down sample. At the bottom, even though I don't have text, I'm going to uncompress text and line art. Then under marks and bleeds, in this case I'll just simply say all printers marks. That's your trim marks, registration marks, color bars, and page information. And then I'll just go down to output, nothing to change there. Under advanced, nothing to change there as well. And basically if you wanted to put a password you could. I don't typically do that. And then a summary of all your settings. So pretty basic. Then finally you just save it. And in this case, I have my uh, preferences saved to preview it in my software called Preview. So I can, this is actually my output file right here. So I can see my registration marks in the corners, my crop marks, my color bars, and it's good to go. So these are the basics for setting up, working with, and generating an output file intended for a four-color print press. And I'd like you to output a file like this for me as well.